Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I want to preface this video with the fact that I am not a professional carpenter, professional form builder, professional concrete worker, none of that. Uh, the only thing I can maybe claim to be a professional at is moving some dirt. And uh, so I know enough to be dangerous in most other fields. This may be one of those things. But today you're going to see how I went from crumbling bowed foundation wall to formed up and ready to pour solid concrete. So like I said, I'm not a professional uh, carpenter or form builder, so there's a lot of time lapse in this video. There's not much way I can condense this into a, a regular format and give it to you guys without doing a lot of time lapses. So uh, I know a lot of you guys don't like the music and you like to hear the hammer swinging and the saws cutting, and there's some of that, but a lot of time lapse just because this took me a long time. Uh, this was days of me coming down here and fiddling with it and uh, not knowing exactly what I'm doing. I was kind of building stuff and I'd be like, nah, I didn't like that. So I'd take it back off and redo it a different way. So the end result here, I'm pretty happy with, and I'm certain that this is going to be plenty strong enough for what we need to do. But uh, hope you guys enjoy. If you like the video, thumbs up, subscribe, enjoy. Okay, so I just came in to check out that gas pipe that I'd ripped up and I didn't think about, and it caused unexpected problems. When I ripped through that gas line on the outside, it had this big six foot piece of it standing up here in the corner. It was right there, even with that other side of the meter. And when I, apparently when I ripped it with the machine outside, it blew apart what was left of the wall in here. I don't know how well you can see that. I know the lighting's bad in here. So it blew that apart and it also pushed the post that I had holding the support beam about three inches this way. So this is bad. So I uncovered this old window well. Uh, I gotta get ready to remove the whole frame there so I can knock this wall out and form it up for concrete. But this old window is jammed in there and no matter what happens, no matter what I do, that, uh, that glass is gonna break when I try to take it out of there. So might as well enjoy it. Crowbars up. Some good glass. Jeez. The window frame made of rotten wood is stronger than the block wall at this point. I am trying to be delicate uh, while I'm tearing this out of here because I'm afraid something's just going to fall. The whole wall already just started falling apart over here.
outsides, inside, and the insides, outside. There's your problem right there. I don't know what's holding this. Cool. This gives you a good cross section of what the wall looks like. So you guys can really see it on camera. There it's buckled there and peeling, kicking. And then look how far down there at the bottom it slid off the foundation. I'd say that's about three and a half, four inches it slid over. There I made this makeshift roof over the hole because it was raining. There's the excavator right there. This is our lentil over here. Right now you can look right up between the bricks and the uh, old exterior of the building before they veneered it. And I still don't know how this is still holding. There's nothing here that's connected to anything. This is just the thin shell of the old bricks. That's amazing to me. Pro tip, now there's debris all over the place. Little things like this, I just stepped on a nail here. Yeah, see that little, little bugger was sticking up there and I stepped on it. Didn't go into my boot or anything. As soon as I felt it, I hurried up and lifted my foot up, but always practice good housekeeping. Keep from hurting yourself. Let's clean this mess up now. Knock some more of this corner out right here. There's a big chunk still up here in the corner, and all this stuff underneath is going to come out real easy. So I'm going to use this long bar to reach in there and poke at stuff so it doesn't come down and hit me. That was a hairy spot for a minute. Let me show you why. That just scared the crap out of me. So I forgot to disconnect this board. And this board was anchored to the wall. It's holding this pipe right here, which runs along the top of that wall and has all the electrical wires staked to it. And it also has that junction box up there. <sighs> all those blocks, while I was standing there for a second, all the blocks wanted to kick back at this post right here. 
and I sure didn't want to have all those blocks come down and hit this post and knock it out from underneath this support beam because then we'd be in a world of trouble. I could have the whole building come down on me. Uh, also, if that did happen, I'd be running for my life at the same time that electrical box gets ripped out and that's the electrical box that's running all my lights right now. So I'd be running for my life and in the dark probably instantly. So that, uh, that just worked out. Whew, I had my nerves going for a second. Oh, bought me a sweet new Bosch demo hammer for this project the other day, so today we get to try it out. Oh. I don't know. It's like brand new. I don't see a scratch on it but it was one of those factory reconditioned deals off of Amazon. I think this thing retailed for like $3.99 and I paid $2.40 for it, so hard to argue with that. So one of the things, I haven't used one of these things in a, a number of years. I'm really concerned with how much vibration I'm gonna be putting into this wall because the brickwork is all just holding itself up out there. So I've got some more brick to chip up on, on the corner there and I don't wanna be hitting this thing with what I'm used to is like a 90 pound pneumatic hammer. So I know this thing isn't like that, but I'm just gonna try it out on some of the junk out there and see how it hits first. It's got this variable wheel here that'll go from one to, uh, well, it only goes up to six, but it'd be a lot cooler if it went to 11. But uh, I'm gonna try her on six first and see how she hits. If you do your cuts right, you can actually split stuff off like that without damaging this thing. So that's what we need to do over here on this corner. Okay, so I need to chase these blocks all back to the original corner of the building. The bell tower or the mezzanine, whatever you want to call it, this is the footer for it over here. There's a line right here. That was poured later, that was added on later. The original corner of the building is right here. So this is where the blocks tooth together and then there's a wall running this way and it cornered went this way. Right here is the last crack of the old bad wall. I'm concerned there's a little bit of pressure on it since it's not like loose. Uh, so I'm gonna slowly start chiseling from the top down and keeping an eye on the bricks up there, making sure nothing's starting to crack or shift. Because if it does, we'll have to hurry up and figure something else out. Hopefully I can just leave the corner intact from top to bottom, and then I'll make the form over top of that, form that all in and pour it solid. And that'll get into these blocks and uh, strengthen them up. Uh, down here, this is the first course of block. I'm no mason, but I'm pretty sure when you pour the force when you do the first course of block on a wall like this off of the footer There's usually rebar anchors in there and they pour a lot of the cores uh, With mortar to hold the, the first course really good and it's also got the floor poured up against it. So that that course uh, Is really on there and that's why it probably never moved is because the floor was holding it and it's also anchored to the footer Anywho, I thought about keeping it for about a half a minute and pouring off of it, but I started scratching it off here with crowbar, and they're all full of water and frozen solid, so these all got to come out low. There's a half block here sticking out underneath the wall that's still holding weight, so I'm going to cut that off with the chop saw, and then we'll start hammering it out of there.
Okay, I hope you can hear me all right. Uh, basically, the hammer, the Bosch hammer works really well, but for popping out this much stuff, I figure I better just put some relief cuts in it with the concrete saw since I have the saw here. Also, uh, it just makes it easier to chip up. You know, it's got a place to, to break. So I'll put a few relief cuts across there. That should make the hammer and go a lot quicker. And uh, in case you guys didn't know, breathable silica is the dust that comes off of concrete or rock or brick or whatever you're cutting uh, it's really bad for you so i actually since i'm going to do a bunch more cutting i went home and grabbed my uh grabbed my dust mask and uh i am wearing earplugs too by the way everybody always yells at me for ear protection i'm really big on the ear protection because my dad can't hear anything so uh yeah let's get cutting
pretty warm outside and it's been snowing all day so now the snow is starting to melt we're getting a lot of rain water down off the roof here i gotta lower my little makeshift roof down and now we don't get any water in the hole Whew. i'm whooped fat boy's out of breath okay so the uh the footer's all cleared off I've got the dirt on the outside lower so that if water comes down here and collects it would have to be a good bit of water before it would come up onto the footer. Uh, now I'm going to start forming up my rebar for in the wall. I'm going to make a rebar grid with vertical and horizontal uh, half inch rebar. And then there's a window that's going to be here eventually. So I'm going to keep the rebar out of that area. But I am going to form the whole thing and pour it all solid and I'll cut the window back out later because when it comes time to take this section of wall out, I want concrete there to hold that weight uh, and support the brick and all that. So let's get started drilling. All right, we're forming up a 12 inch wide wall. So we want to put this hole six inches so the rebar is centered in the wall. And then uh, I'm going to keep it pretty tight to this corner and that'll be my zero. From there I'll measure a foot and a half back this way. Just mocking this up right now. I gotta go get the uh, beautiful uh, adhesive you stick down in the holes. It's like a two part epoxy. You squirt it in the holes and it holds the rebar in place. Most of the time I like working alone, but sometimes it's nice to have an extra set of hands. This will be one of those times. Over the years, doing stuff like this by myself I have found some pretty resourceful ways to hold things hold things or get things done by yourself that would otherwise take two, two or more people heavy equipment helps a lot alrighty Right now I've got three whalers running horizontal across the back of these two sheets and uh, it's going to get two more in between those and then I'll put uh, strong backs on it and kickers into the hillside and then uh, wedge everything tight and flush. This, this side here might be a problem because I'm up against the existing block that isn't coming out yet. And I, I could just cut the sheet off, make it square, but I'm gonna try and do it without cutting the sheets. That way I can reuse them as full sheets. 
I don't want to cut this stuff. This plywood's expensive. So I like to reuse it as many times as possible when you start cutting it. And you're not going to get as many uses out of it. So I'm going to finish drilling the horizontal holes now for the rebar grid. And then we're going to uh, epoxy the uh, rebar into the holes so that we can wash the form down and not get the dirt washed into the holes. So we'll wash the form out so we get good adhesion with the new concrete so that the uh, dust and stuff doesn't keep the concrete from sticking to the old brick. Now we can finish uh, epoxying in our horizontal rebar. In case you guys have never seen this stuff before, the tube actually does the mixing on here. It's got like little wafer plates in there and there's actually two small bags inside of here. When you cut it open, you're cutting open both bags and they're sticking out the end and when you squeeze it, they come out and they mix together in the nozzle here, which was what makes it a two-part epoxy. So you've got like uh, an active ingredient and then like a hardener or curing agent and it, it'll actually get warm and uh, it'll set up really quick. All right, we'll wait for that uh, epoxy to cure before I go finish tying everything. That way I'm not shaking it around, pulling it in and out of the holes. That'll also help keep me from knocking everything out of square. Uh, I think it looks pretty good though. All right, guys and girls, that does it for this week's video. Originally, when I uh, shot this, I was thinking this was all going to be the uh, demolition of the wall and the framing of the form all done into one video. But when I brought it home on the computer here and started doing it, I had a lot more footage than I thought. And it kind of worked out because uh, all this week has been incredibly rainy and wet, so I haven't really gotten to get much done. Uh, so next week, we'll be building the form and uh, setting up the concrete. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, give it a subscribe so you don't miss out on uh, what I'm doing with this church and what I'm doing with all my other projects. So I'll catch you guys next week. Thanks. Mm -hmm.